The best time of the year is here. NHL 24 has dropped and it's time to create our team for the franchise mode rebuild. So many good options here. I think I know who I want to go with, but let's review here. We've done the Ottawa Senators before we've done the Los Angeles Kings, but I think it's down between two teams. I think the San Jose Sharks are a great option, and I kind of like the idea of the Montreal Canadiens. All the other teams, I mean, they're just studs. I, I, I don't mind doing any of these teams, but I think this time we were in the West last year. We're going back to the East, the Montreal Canadiens, La Canadien de Montreal. It is time to rebuild or retool the team. I think the team is in a decent spot. They have some good players, Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, Kirby Dock. The team isn't bad, but I think we got to make a couple moves and let's turn the Montreal Canadiens at the Stanley Cup champions once again and bring that Stanley Cup home to Canada. So we're going to keep all the rules the exact same. I'm not going to change anything. For the career aspect, I'm going to turn off owner mode. Salary cap will stay on. I don't want the coach touching my lines. I don't care for fog of war. P player morale, we will we'll keep player morale on to make things interesting. Computer trades, we're okay to keep those on. Auto sign for agents off. Auto staff management, we're going to keep that on because I don't want to deal with all the coaching. And the only thing we're going to change in the advanced settings is we're going to go sim engine on scoring on high and sim engine shot frequency on high it just makes it a little bit more fun so uh, i think that'd be re a really cool aspect of this particular franchise mode and i'm actually going to turn injuries off to keep it really fun and have our players always playing to their best of their abilities and with that it is time to start our career with the montreal canadians as we are heading to the bell canada center and we're gonna keep that salary cap on. The Laval Rocket are gonna be our AHL squad. And I'm very excited to get going with the Montreal Canadiens. In real life, I'm a Sens fan, so I know a little bit about the Montreal Canadiens. They've uh, they've given us some heartbreaking losses over the years. But let's go take a look and start with just looking at their team, the edit lines roster of day one before we make any moves. And with this franchise mode, I'm gonna try to keep it more legit than not. I'm not gonna be trading Cole Caulfield for three first round picks and and whatever we're gonna try building this team around nick suzuki and cole caulfield slavkovsky is obviously going to be a player that we can keep in mind on how we can grow this particular player medium elite potential but let's take a look at that first line for now tanner pearson 81 overall nick suzuki captain of the squad heart and soul of this team is going to be an 88 overall and cole caulfield is going to be 86 overall medium elite once again this is a really good team i don't think there's too much that we need to do i think potentially going to miss the playoffs for maybe one to two years but i think that we we can make this work christian dvorak on that second round and we're going to want to look at the contracts too as dvorak's on a pretty expensive contract kirby doc and josh anderson who is on a stupid contract as well yeah 5.5 for four mil or four years so the big challenge with the montreal canadians isn't going to be how good the roster is it's going to be how we can navigate this cap issue and turn this team into contenders the third line we have yurak or yurak Slavkovsky, I cannot remember how to pronounce this first team. I'm so sorry, Montreal Canadiens fans. But Slavkovsky, definitely what I eventually want is him to be on that first line with Suzuki and Caulfield and have that as a dominant first line in the NHL. Sean Monaghan comes back on a friend, family-friendly deal, you know, two mil for one year. And then Brendan Gallagher, the heart and soul of this team for many years, but 6.5 mil for four, four years. And what I'm going to do in this series is I'm not going to be trading someone for a cap dump so if brandon gallagher is on the squad i cannot go trade him for a seventh round pick it's just we're not going to do it that way especially since gallagher's been on this team forever you got to respect it a little bit on that third line rafael harvey pinard jake evans and yesi yolinen who i believe they didn't draft did they? oh they did draft him okay he is i potentially think could be good I think Yolanin, we can grow him to be a really good player, top nine, at least in that top nine, kind of replacing Gallagher. And defensively, who do we have on the roster? We have Michael Matheson, Den David Savard, Caden Gooley, who is a nice young defenseman who we can really grow, Chris Weidman, Justin Barron, and then Gustav Lindstrom. So obviously the defense isn't our, let's say, bread and butter of this team. We are a better offensive team than defensive team. And then in the cage, we have Jake L. Jake Allen, Jake Allen, and Samuel Montembeau, however you pronounce his name, no, I don't know what it is, um, so we're gonna look at the team here, it's not bad, it's not bad at all, you know, for the offensive side of the game, 
it's pretty good but i want to also take a look at their ahl squad so let's hover over to the laval rocket and take a look at what we have in the ahl as well and see what we can kind of do to propel this team to the next level gabriel bork don't really care it's almost like we get rid of him but sean farrell sean farrell is actually a very or pharrell I'm going to call him Will Farrell Jr. So Will Farrell Jr., a really good prospect, 78 overall, medium top six, 21 years old. So he can become a really good player for us as well. He's a playmaker to play alongside of potentially Cole Caulfield in the future. Joel Armia, nothing really too much there. We have Mitchell Stevens. So not a lot of good prospects. Leas Anderson, Joshua Waugh. Joshua Waugh we can develop, 71 overall, medium top six. Heenian, who is a medium top six as well. So we're starting to find some better prospects down the the, the depth charts here. And then Ligari, bottom six. Condota, he could be good. Medium top nine or low top nine and Boyer. So really what we're going to be focusing on this year is I think we got to develop Joshua Waugh. And how can we do that? We're going to throw him on the first line. And the other prospect that we want to develop is going to be, where is my boy? Heinenen. Or I'm in. So we're going to throw him where Bork is. We don't need Bork playing. He's a bum. Boyer, that's fine. That's fine. Condota, we should bring up here, though. Condota, let's bring him where Millet is and uh, keep the team like this. I'm going to put him on the center position so he can practice on his wing. Heinen, he should be a left wing, so I'm going to throw him on the left side. Elias Anderson. So Farrell, ideally, we could probably bring him up. We could probably bring him up. I'm going to keep him down for this particular year. Unless you want me to play him in the comments below, let me know. But we're going to keep the lines like that. And defensively, let's go take a look. Jordan Harris is an okay defensive prospect. Nothing spectacular. David Reinbacher could be very good, though. Medium elite potential. I know there was some uh, hate about him being drafted. Uh, 26, 23 for Norlander. So he could end up making the NHL roster. And then Nicholas Bodine also could end up making the roster at one point but i think it's safe to say that defensively our best prospect is definitely going to be david reinbacher so he is going to be the one to keep an eye out and then in the nets we have caden primo who i honestly am probably gonna start bring him up and, and be our backup goaltender in year number one but that's how we're going to leave the lines for now we're going to revisit them in a little bit the next thing I want to go ahead and take a look at is this contract situation that we have. So let's go into view contracts and see what our cap space is looking like, what deals we have locked up long term. I don't need your your little uh, re oh, 11 mil, 11 mil. So we do have a decent amount of money. Sean Monahan offer contract extension just to kind of get in the ballpark. He's going to want about 2.8 mil, so about 3 million next season. And you know what? It's probably not a terrible idea. Looking down the roster, next year we're going to have to sign Tanner Pearson, who honestly I don't see coming back to the team. Lindstrom, I do see coming back to the team. I don't know why I clicked trade for asset. Definitely ruined all my momentum there, but that's okay. Let's go back, 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 back. Please, 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 please. Thank you very much. Exit out of the trading. So it looks like our cap isn't insanely bad. Obviously, we got Suzuki and Caulfield locked up to long-term deals, which is very good. Josh Anderson, not ideal. 6.5 for Gallagher, again, not ideal. But there is some players that we, we don't... There's no one big that we have to sign as of right now. Slavkovsky, in a couple of years, is going to be worth a couple bucks. So we're going to have to make sure to save some money for him. But looking at that, it's not too bad. And then goaltenders, obviously, Jake Allen's making a couple bucks here, but nothing too intense. So... The contract situation, not as bad as what I initially thought. And I just want to take a quick peek at the free agents and see who we have. So Trevor Zegers is a, is a free agent. Uh, we're definitely not going to be signing him. Obviously, restricts free agent in real life. He did just get a contract extension. Jamie Drysdale, another player who just got a contract. Oh, he hasn't got a contact, contract extension. We can go pick up Patrick Kane. Not going to end up doing that. Not going to pick up Pinto, Josh Bailey, Jonathan Taze. Like, none of these players are, are kind of, well. Phil Kessel. I mean, what do we say? Do we just try bringing Phil Kessel in here? Do we try bring Phil the Thrill Kessel over to the squad? I'm just taking a look at the prospects and seeing if there's anyone else that we want to kind of sign here. Like, a Liam Kirk kind of get him to play in the AHL. Maybe he ends up being something good for us. So I'm trying to sign him to an extension and kind of take a gamble on, on a player like that. 23 years old, medium top six. Shaw's a little bit too old for me. Dudas, 
Aiden Dudas, same kind of idea. I might just sign him and kind of fill out that AHL squad just a little bit more. And uh, Yessi Pulley Arby. I don't. I wouldn't mind taking a chance on a player like Yessi Pulley Arby. I want to keep the team relatively same, so I'm not gonna. Artem Anisimov. I didn't even know he was still playing. Did he play last year? Check curiosity. Yeah, he played in the AHL for Laval. <laughs> I think that's Laval. Uh, interesting, Brian Little. I'm not going to sign anyone else. I don't want to change this team too much in year number one. I want to keep it how it is. I want you guys to have a say in the team. I mean, realistically, I probably should bring in this guy or this guy. But that's completely fine. Those are going to be those contracts. And now let's go take a look at our team and trade value. So proposed trade. Again, I'm not going to be trading away players like Brendan Gallagher. I'm not going to be trading away players like Sean Monahan or anything along those lines. Obviously, trade values are kind of a little bit low here, but let's take a look. So Suzuki leading the way with Caulfield. Slavkovsky right behind at 79 overall. Ryan Backer, Kirby Dock, Michael Matheson, Gooley. Sorry, there's construction going outside right now, if you can hear that. Baron Sean Monahan, Dennis Savard. So... Not a lot of trade value on the squad. Jackeye, 79 overall at 22 years old. I'd like to grow him and, and really have him become quite quite the story. I know he's a big, a, a big, big piece of Montreal right now. The guy's, he's working at Costco, then ends up making the NHL roster and becomes an absolute menace. Morale will be one thing that we have to keep an eye on. So keep a, make sure I keep an eye on that because, yeah. Oh, did they sign, did they draft Jackeye's brother? I think they drafted Jackeye's brother. I don't know anything about this guy. Florian Jackeye, 6'2", 184, drafted by the fourth round, is a grinder. I'm not even surprised his brother. What is his brother listed as? I would say a defensive defenseman or enforcer defenseman. Defensive defenseman, that makes sense. Arbor Jackeye. That's uh, interesting to say the least, but these are all going to be the potentials and overalls of our team and I think what I want to go ahead and do is look at the roster moves now. And I want to set a roster that we're going to end up dominating with. So let's go roster moves. We are listed as sellers. So obviously not going to be cup contenders as of right now. We're going to go into the goaltenders. Montembeau. You know what? I may keep Caden Primo in the in the minors and hope that he can grow down there. Carey Price. Carey Price in the minors. I would never trade him even if he had the $10 million price tag. I guess, how it's, I guess that's what we're saving on right now. So goalies will keep the same. Defensemen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have one extra, and uh, it's going to be between Baron, who I, I kind of need to play, and Jackeye. What about Lindstrom? You know, Jackeye might just be the one left out. He is listed as a depth defender. I want to get Jackeye some ice time, though, but top six potential realistically it probably isn't the best you know what i'm gonna get jack eye some ice time i'm throwing lindstrom down into the minors and jack eye's gonna get some ice time here and then in the minors harris don't really need just kind of looking to see if there's any of these players who we need to be focused on developing is definitely going to be dave david reinbacher other than that i think our defenseman is a little weak there so i'm okay with any of those moves and forwards we need to get rid of two players in the system or in the nhl and it's going to be piazza for sure is going to be one of them and i kind of want to keep yolan in on the line but if he's listed as a depth i don't mind putting him down there having a great year in the ahl yeah i'm okay with that we got to keep slavkowski up so those are going to be the roster changes that we make so if we go into the in the system now i'm going to keep sean farrell down there on the first line but he's going to be playing with joel armia and yolanen and i really hope that first line can really tear it up and then help with the development of both of those players so i'm going to go into the edit lines now we'll set it as best lines so christian dvorak i'm not going to have tanner pearson playing on that first line i'm going to actually Put Slavkowski on that first line. Even though his role is a fourth line, it might be a terrible idea. Please let me know in the comments below if this is something I should be changing. But I think it would be great to get him a little bit more ice time. Josh Anderson, Gallagher, Monahan. I think I want to have Monahan. How old is Monahan? 28 years old, Doc 22. Doc would be a player I do really want to grow as well. I know he's a medium top, high top six. So we can even throw Doc on that first line and, and really kind of ramp it up. I think Slavkovsky being up there he isn't a superstar X factor or anything along those lines, but he is a medium elite potential player. And this kind of, the font is kind of big to me, but that's okay. Tanner Pearson, 
31, Harvey Pinard, Evans, and Alex Newhook. I didn't even realize that we had Alex Newhook on this team. And I think Alex Newhook would be someone that I really would like to develop. And I would even like developing him over most of these players. Josh Anderson, I'm going to throw here. Gallagher, it's kind of the odd man out. Strictly just because Gallagher, I mean, the overall... 81 6.5 mil so i don't want to put him on the fourth line so he loses too much morale but he is listed as a third line checking forward anderson third line checking forward monahan third line scoring forward jake evans probably gonna get mad with that ice time harvey pinard and then obviously tanner pearson may get a little bit upset but alex newhook what if i were to throw alex newhook on the first line to give him a little bit more support playing with suzuki and slavkovsky and then that way we're not gonna be kind of butchering Slavkovsky's confidence by putting him on the first line where he might not be as productive as he should be and I'll also throw him on the left side rather than right side actually I want him on his one timer I want him on his one timer side right there he is listed as a power forward so I'm hoping Slavkovsky can be a really good player for us defensively kind of a little bit of a disaster here we definitely need to make some sort of move here because a minus three is just it's just not going to cut it here so I'm going to go Caden Gooley on that can't even put Gooley on the first line. We are definitely going to have some morale issues here. I'm going to put Jack Eye up. No, instead of Jack Eye, I'll put Baron up. We'll put Baron up. Jack Eye can stay down with Weidman, but the minus three is going to kill them. Is there anything I can do about that minus three? Yeah, nothing we can really do. Kind of Brock Garrison, our coach, isn't very very helpful with this so maybe i gotta bring chris weidman down to the ahl and, and bring up an e hmm i could bring chris weidman down that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring chris weidman down so let me go into the ross moves once again bear with me as we try to make this montreal canadians roster a little bit more austin loves you friendly we can say uh, we're going to go Chris Weidman. We're going to drop him down into the system. And I think I'm either going to pick up Harris, who has decent potential. Yeah, I think I want to pick up Harris. And we'll keep Lindstrom down there. Now I'm going to go into edit NHL lines. And I'm going to put Harris on that defensive line now. So we're going even strength, defense. And right here is where we're going to throw Harris. And we're going to hope and pray minus five. Okay. Minus three, so Jack Eye might be the problem. We might need to get rid of Jack Eye from the roster. No matter who we put down there, it's kind of just a little bit of a disaster. Caden Gooley. That minus five isn't gonna work. Minus five isn't gonna work. Okay, we're gonna. The minus five makes it tough. We're going to get right. Our defense core is just, they hate us. They hate us. That's just the way it is. I can go like this. I can make it a little bit better by doing it that way. So I'm going to keep that minus five for now. I'm going to keep it for now, but we're, we're probably going to have to change that because it will lose us games. Jack Eye is playing at a 73 as long with his defensive partner playing at a 79 or 74 it just isn't gonna work but let's go edit lines one more time and take a look at the laval rocket and make sure that we have exactly what we want in that first line so i think this is how we want to have it set up leas anderson yolanin and farrell on that first line and heenian we want to get up into that second line realistically bork can go down and anyone else we want to get joshua wah we can throw i'll keep joshua wall in the third line because he is not the greatest yet he's still very uh needs to develop a lot so we're gonna keep it that way and then back to the nhl sorry lots of roster moves in episode one i think that we're also gonna have to change a lot of this team uh, as per the comments but we'll have to figure out what we want to do with that third line pairing i think that's the most important thing offensively we actually look pretty good which is good to see but i'm gonna go power play and I just want to make sure that 
yeah i don't i don't like this setup at all i want cole caulfield on the right side i want matheson off the power play i want slavkovsky in the middle so slavkovsky can go in the middle power play line two make sure he's not on it he is not on it so i'm okay with this uh suzuki monahan i'm actually gonna have edit these lines i want the finisher to be caulfield just remove this distributor that's fine and puck carrier i think it would be best if we had it as nick suzuki and even distributor maybe we can make that we'll keep it as nick suzuki for now but i think that would be the best ideal situation have slavkowski in the middle get him a little bit extra points cole caulfield on his one timer side shoots left actually i'm gonna put monahan in the middle and have slavkowski on the right side and then Gooley will be our back end and i'm okay with the way that looks now so i'm gonna exit out of that and i think those are gonna be the only roster moves i make for episode number one of the montreal canadians franchise mode and before i end it we got to get a quick simulation in it liam kirk gonna join the team dundas gonna join the team don't know what we're gonna do with them but I think the main thing for this episode is to take a look at that third line defensive pairing and seeing what we can do. Oh, damn. Already morale down low. So the morale is going to be one thing. I've never played with morale on. I've always turned it off. So it's going to be very interesting to monitor. First game of the season, we're visiting the Air Canada Center. So the Montreal, and it, did I say Bell Canada Center? I think it's just the Bell Center earlier. And we get scored on in the first 19 seconds. As Mitch Marner scores the first shot of the year on Jake Allen. We're down 1-0 to the Toronto Maple Leafs. But it's okay. We're going to bounce back. First period. There it is. 2-2. Two two. Bertuzzi gets a goal. Two minutes later. Down 2 nothing in the first two minutes. But we get a power play goal from Goal Caulfield. And then a power play marker from Kirby Dock. So our power play is firing on all cylinders so far. 2-2. Two for two. And 5-4, to four, Caulfield with the hat trick in game number one. Is Caulfield going to be that guy for us? Is Caulfield going to be a 60-goal scorer? 60 goals. Matthews does score Robertson and Mike Matheson. But we have a 5-4 to four lead heading into the third period. Being outshot about 2-1 to one almost at this point. Mitch Marner scores his second of the game on Jake Allen. Power play. Can we answer again? Unable to capitalize. And Jake McCabe scores with 10 minutes left. And we give up a power play. It's a long one. Oh, Kelly Yarncroak. Giving up seven goals in week number one. It's just eight goals. Sorry. Marner gets a hat trick. Caulfield gets a hat trick. The three stars are going to be incredible. Austin Matthews, three points. Willie Nylander, four assists. Mitch Marner, five points. Uh, it was a, let's just put, it was a, a game for the stats. We'll, we'll call it that. Caulfield, 10 shots. Okay, that's what I like to seek. Three assists from Suzuki, two assists from Newhook, two assists from Slavkovsky. Okay, so our players did get, the players that we wanted to get the puck did get the puck, which is good. Sean Monaghan, though, had a horrendous game with Gallagher and Anderson. So that fourth line was really, our third line was really trouble. So something to keep our eyes out on. But Caulfield, a great start to the year. Three goals in his first game. And you know what? Let's simulate one more game. We're playing Connor Bedard. Slavkovsky versus Connor Bedard. Who is going to take it? Caulfield on our squad. Can he continue his goal scoring ways? First period. one nothing, And it's Kirby Dock with his second of the year as we are out shooting the Blackhawks. One, sorry, 11-7 to with a score of 1-0. to zero. Second period, two more go goals for the good guys. Sean Monahan, after being a minus four, gets a goal. And Caulfield scores his fourth of the season as we outshoot the Blackhawks. 20-15, to 15, heading into the third period. Haven't seen Connor Bedard out there scoring goals, which is very, very thankful. Power play, did I just jinx it? And Christian Dvorak scores on... I wasn't shorthanded. Power play, we can really, really score here. Come on, come on. Long one, it's a long one. Can't capitalize, but we are up four to two with two minutes left. And just like that, the Montreal Canadiens have collected their first win of the regular season. And I think that is where we're going to end this video. Slap Kofsky with another two assists to bring his total up to four assists in two games. Caulfield, four goals in two games. I'm liking where this is going. I'm liking where this is going, but I'm going to end it here. So the question to you, my assistant general managers, is should we keep Newhook on this first line and Slavkovsky on the second line? It seems like it's working. 
Clearly, we may need to move around some things on this uh, this third line right here. But for the time being, let's keep it the way it is. But defensively, how can we work on... Oh, okay, so it's only, only a minus three now. It was a minus five earlier. I don't know how that changed, but they are both minus two, minus one, which is fine. Gooley, plus two. Mike Matheson, minus three. Savard, minus three. This first line, I think, will get lit up just a little bit, but... There's nothing you can particularly do about that. So that third line defensively, what do you want to do with it? I'm going to end the video here. Episode number one in the books. The Montreal Canadiens are headed for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, maybe not this year, but we're going to get it done. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Welcome to NHL 24 Franchise Mode.